<clears throat> okay. So now we are going to start the next uh, part in this chapter. That is the spontaneity. Okay. This is the last part of thermodynamics. And then one more section we have in this that is thermochemistry. Thermochemistry is not that big. We can finish this in uh, like in one class, max to max one class, not more than that. Two to three hours, anytime you can finish this. So, <clears throat> spontaneity means what? Okay, heading all of you write down spontaneous and non spontaneous process. Just a second. Yeah. <clears throat> Heading all of you write down. Spontaneous and non spontaneous process. What is a spontaneous process? Spontaneous process is a process which happens on its own or after a proper initiation. Correct? It doesn't require a continuous support. Okay, I'll give you the definition here. First, try and understand. A spontaneous process are all those processes which happens either on its own or after a proper initiation. Like, for example, you see, you have pen in your hand, you just leave the pen, right? It will go down. It is in spontaneous process. Flow of water down the hill, a spontaneous process. Diffusion of gas from high pressure to low pressure, a spontaneous process. Flow of current, high voltage to high volt to high you know, potential to low potential, a spontaneous process. Correct? All these processes are what? Spontaneous because it doesn't require any <coughs> support, external support, a continuous external support. Another example you see, uh, burning of fuel. Burning of fuel is also an spontaneous process because, because it just requires an initiation. Just spark it, it will burn, right? So continuous support is not required. A spontaneous process. Suppose a candle is burning, right? And when you cover the candle with a, any you know, box or any glass, right? What happens after some time, the candle extinguished, right? It won't burn uh, for so long. Why, 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 why does this happen? Because the flow of oxygen is hindered in that case, right? Whatever the oxygen is present in that particular volume, right? That oxygen gets consumed and once it's done, the candle is extinguished. So what is the condition for the continuous burning of candle? The condition is the continuous flow of oxygen or air, you can say. So that is what that is a non-spontaneous process. Okay, it, it requires a continuous support, non-spontaneous process. All the process you reverse, <clears throat> like diffusion of gas from low pressure to high pressure. Continuous support is required. You have to push the gas, right? Continuous support is required. That is non-spontaneous process. Okay, so like this, we define spontaneous and non-spontaneous process. Understood all of you? Right, definition you write down, spontaneous process. Oh, one second. Okay, so 
spontaneous process definition you write down a process which has a natural tendency to occur a process which has or i'll write down it <clears throat> spontaneous this is the process which has the natural tendency natural tendency to occur by its own by its own or after or after a proper initiation initiation means just you need to initiate the process and then leave it proper initiation under a given set of condition that is a spontaneous process many examples we have flow of water down the hill flow of water down the hill flow of electricity flow of electricity high potential to low potential spontaneous process burning of fuel of fuel spontaneous process okay this requires initiation spontaneous process rusting of iron rusting of iron is a spontaneous process okay neutralization reaction is spontaneous process all these are the example of spontaneous process one note you write down all natural processes all natural processes all natural processes are spontaneous and irreversible in nature all natural processes are spontaneous and irreversible in nature correct <clears throat> copy <clears throat> okay next one is non spontaneous process non spontaneous process write down a process which can which can neither occur neither occur by itself
a process which can neither occur by itself nor by nor by initiation initiation is called non spontaneous process non spontaneous process next line write down it doesn't mean it doesn't mean that non spontaneous process non spontaneous process does not happen at all does not happen at all it is possible with continuous external support continuous external support <clears throat> copy this down correct what is the example of this the example of this i'll, I'll give you the best example you can understand few days back we were doing hydrogen right the preparation of hydrogen right we have done one process that is electrolysis of water remember yes electrolysis of water in which hydrogen discharged at cathode and oxygen discharge at anode right so electrolysis of water what it what it requires it requires continuous support of electricity from outside right we need to connect the electrode with the external source of voltage no yes so since it requires continuous support the process is non spontaneous okay you remove that uh, the voltage source the process won't happen right it will stop that's why electrolysis is what is a non spontaneous process right flow of heat from hot to cold body sorry flow of heat from cold to hot from cold to hot body non spontaneous process right like this we have many examples of non spontaneous process clear which process aditya 
at what stage, which process you are saying? Electrolysis. See, uh, we don't say when after what time the process will get complete. Simple thing. In the solution, if there is no more H plus or O minus OH minus ion present, then there is no movement of ions towards the electrode and hence no oxidation or reduction. So the moment we have that H plus and OH minus ion, the process will be there. And after that, the process won't happen. We have some more things into that. Slowly what happens, these are the concepts you will study in electrochemistry 12th grade. Slowly what happens on the electrodes, there is accumulation of some compounds, which are basically impurities. So slowly it, you know, it affects the working of electrode and after some time it won't work. Radioactive decay is a spontaneous, uh, we can say not all, but like the one which is required only initiation, some kind of support, those uh, decays are a spontaneous process. It depends upon the process, what you are talking about, mother. Okay. Definition we have, if this particular thing fits into that particular definition, then it is a spontaneous process. I think one, it's, once it starts, it goes on, right? So it is a spontaneous process. Yes, mother, clear. Now you see, this is just the definition. Obviously, definition they, they won't ask you. Why we have done this and, and what is the use of this that we need to understand. See, when we talk about, acha, one note, uh, one point you write down first. Here, write down. It has been observed that it has been observed that that the most spontaneous process, most of the spontaneous process, most of the most of the spontaneous uh, process or chemical reactions, chemical reactions I'll write down. Chemical reactions are exothermic. Not all, most of them. Now what things, what, what we can conclude from this particular information? I'll give you one example. H2 gas, when reacts with O2 gas, it converts into what? H2O liquid and it is an exothermic process, spontaneous. Carbon solid reacts with O2, reacts with O2 gas, it is CO2 gas, exothermic process. So all these processes are spontaneous in nature. So can we say the, con the condition for spontaneity is delta H less than zero? Okay. So since most of the reactions are exothermic in nature, so we can say this is the condition we have that for all those reactions where delta H is less than zero, the reaction is said to be spontaneous. Okay, hold on here, right? Now I'll give you some more example. See this, H2O liquid, H2O gas. I'm talking about the process of evaporation Evaporation process is spontaneous or not? We know water liquid converts into gas easily, no? Yes or no, guys? 
you have one glass of water you leave it at the room temperature for 10 days you will see after 10 days the level of water is decreasing in the glass that is the evaporation process correct you all know evaporation and boiling what is the difference right so evaporation is an spontaneous process right it happens at 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 the normal temperature that we have but boiling happens at a specific temperature like for water is 100 degrees celsius boiling requires continuous supply of heat right so boiling is non spontaneous but evaporation is spontaneous right so if you just try to understand the thing here how this liquid converts into gas when it absorbs energy from surroundings yes or no so this is a kind of endothermic process kind of endothermic process yes or no respond guys if you talk about h2o solid you take ice from the fridge and leave it at the room temperature what happens then it converts into liquid is spontaneous or not are we doing something are we you know supporting this ice in any ways so that it converts into liquid no correct so this is also a spontaneous process one more information i am giving you carbon sorry calcium carbonate solid you heat this you supply energy into this it converts into cao solid and carbon dioxide gas releases Uh, that is always there aditya so environmental effect we are ignoring because it, it will be there on all the processes okay in that way we can think yeah what is non spontaneous vibha gayatri csu3 okay no it is not also a non it is not a non spontaneous process it is also a spontaneous process okay it is also a spontaneous process we are just heating it that is what i'm trying to make you understand see we can easily understand that when energy decreases the system is going towards stability and hence it is spontaneous just a second mother just a second just a second we haven't done it we haven't finished it wait see what i am telling you that for all those processes in which delta h is less than 0 or exothermic processes we can easily say the process is spontaneous because we are going towards a lower energy state because some energy is going out no so high to lower energy state we are going more stable state it is and hence it is spontaneous we can say that happily it will go into the more stable state right so that's a natural tendency we have correct okay but what about these processes how do we define i'm just giving you this information i'm not asking you i'm not asking you whether it is non spontaneous or spontaneous i am telling you this is an spontaneous process so first let us take this as it is it is spontaneous and that is what i'm trying to explain that what is that factor which makes these processes spontaneous for exothermic to we can understand it is going towards lower energy state more stable state spont there is a natural tendency so spontaneous it is but what about these processes here the energy is increasing no solid to liquid liquid to gas solid to gas energy is increasing we are providing energy into it but then also this process are A spontaneous process, right? These are also a spontaneous process. So, point I am trying to make is only delta H is not the criteria for a process to be an spontaneous process. Would you agree with me on this? There must be something else. There must be some other factor. Yes. Would you agree with me on this, all of you? Respond. correct fine 
So this is the one thing we have, right? That delta H, obviously it is a condition less than zero, but we have few examples in which delta H is not less than zero, but still the process is spontaneous. No, wait, 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 just a second, Aditya, just a second. So we have one more, you know, factor over here. Let's not think about the condition for spontaneity. I will come to that point, okay? I'm just trying to make you understand what are the possible conditions we have. So we'll discuss all and then we'll see the overall effect, okay? So delta H, obviously one of the criteria we have, but it, this is not the only criteria because we have some reactions in which delta H is not less than zero, but it is still is spontaneous in nature, right? So what is the other factor? The other factor that we define here is randomness. Have you heard this term? Randomness or disorderness. Correct. Randomness is what? How do we say it? Anything like if the yes, correct. I, I'm, I'm coming to that point. So randomness is what? The tendency of the particles. Yes, degree of randomness also you can say. The tendency of the particles to move randomly. How random the particles can move. If there is random motion, there's no pattern here and there, like it is moving. Random motion, then the process it's said to be spontaneous, not only, again, one of the factors we have, correct? So randomness is the tendency for a particle to move random in all possible direction, right? So this is the another factor we have apart from delta H, which should be less than zero. Randomness is the another factor. Now, how do we measure randomness? Now to measure randomness, we have given a new thermodynamic term that is entropy. that is entropy. Entropy we use to measure randomness of any substance. If the entropy of substance A is more than to that of B, we'll say A has more random motion. Are you getting it? Tell me. See how the topics, you know, you need to understand how it is connected. Otherwise, randomly, if I pick, okay, directly I'll take entropy, I won't tell you the history behind it. You won't be able to connect things, okay? So entropy is again a new thermodynamic term defined, okay, which is represented by S. And why do we define it? To measure, to measure what? Randomness. To measure randomness or disorderness. Disorderness. Take it. Write down the definition next. Randomness, entropy, definition, write down. It is a thermodynamic state quantity. It is again a state quantity, okay, like internal energy, enthalpy and all. Write down, it is a thermodynamic state quantity. which gives the, it is a thermodynamic state quantity, which gives the degree of disorderness or randomness of the molecules of the system. What did you write? It is a thermodynamic state quantity, right? Which, which gives us or which measures the degree of randomness or disorderness of the molecules of the system. Right. Next line, it is an extensive property 
it is an extensive property and depends upon the any uh, sorry extensive property and state function it is an extensive property and state function depends upon initial and final state so delta s if you need to find out it is final entropy minus initial entropy this is what the change in entropy we have <clears throat> it is expressed at unit we have joule per kelvin or calorie per kelvin okay okay now if you think of any liquid molecules sl <coughs> excuse me is the entropy of the liquid molecules okay sl is the entropy of the liquid molecule so entropy of liquid molecule is more than to that of solid can we say that because solid particles are rigid okay they cannot move hence entropy is more similarly gas ka entropy is more than to that of liquid or overall if i write down the entropy of gaseous molecules is maximum then entropy of liquid then entropy of solid are you getting it more entropy means more randomness no it's not heat capacity is not this heat capacity we discussed no cpcv unit is same maybe you are yeah dimension wise you can say but it the function of this is different right we also define this per mole also joule per mole kelvin joule per mole kelvin no wait 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 just a second wait entropy depends upon something else wait Okay. Now write down as temperature increases. As temperature increases, because mostly we deals with gases, so kinetic energy of the gases increases. We have done this in gases state. Temperature kinetic directly proportional. Kinetic energy increases means randomness increases. The molecules will have random motion. Randomness increases means entropy increases. then okay this statement to write down mathematically mathematically it is defined as defined as the integral of integral of all terms all terms involved in in the heat exchange heat exchange divided by by the absolute temperature in a reversible 
in a reversible isothermal process. Reversible isothermal process. So the change in entropy ds is equal. This is the fact we have. Okay, this information is fact. Stake it as it is. D Q reversible. Q reversible. Reversible process heat exchange. So the change in entropy is equals to we have Q reversible by temperature. This is the mathematical definition we have of entropy change. One note you write down, any process has natural tendency to move towards more randomness. Any process has natural tendency to move towards more randomness, okay? So what happens? Yato will have this one, delta H less than zero, going towards stability. It will happen happily, right? Spontaneous. Or in the process, delta S must be greater than zero. Entropy must increase. So if this condition is satisfied or this condition is satisfied, for the spontaneous process. So it has been observed that the process you know, goes in that direction only where the entropy is increasing, randomness is increasing. Okay, now you look at this example. This example that we had discussed here, you see. Uh, you see this, liquid to gas, we know gases particles has more randomness, right? That's why the process is spontaneous over here. Gas to liquid, liquid has more ran, uh, you know, more entropy than this, is spontaneous in nature. Here you see it is solid. This is also solid, but this is gas. Since we have the gases particles this side on the product side, so the reaction has the natural tendency to move towards the uh, product side. Correct? Hence the process is spontaneous in nature. Did you understand this? Right, so either you'll think of enthalpy change, delta H should be less than zero, or you will think of entropy change, delta S should be greater than zero. So we have basically, till now, till now we have two criteria for spontaneity. What are those criteria? We have two criteria for spontaneity. One is enthalpy change, other one is entropy change. Later on, we'll also see that instead of considering two factors, we'll combine these two factors and we'll give a new thermodynamic term in order to understand the spontaneous behavior of a process because both are temperature dependent process. So both process with temperature will have, will combine and we'll get a new thermodynamic term that we'll see later on. And the reason also we'll see why we do that. Okay. Let's discuss few things about entropy, because entropy again is a major portion over here. You'll get uh, questions on this, uh, entropy based questions. So we'll discuss few things about entropy and then we'll move on to the other things, okay? Okay, see, on the basis of few conditions, we will be discussing this. See what condition I'm taking the first. First is, For an spontaneous
for an instantaneous isolated system for an instantaneous isolated system so since the system is isolated right so there is no interaction with a spontaneous process i'm sorry for an instantaneous process in isolated system in spontaneous process in isolated system so we have isolated system and what is isolated system we know isolated system does not interact with surroundings at all right so obviously between system and surrounding there is no interaction right but if the isolated system consists of gases this is the isolated system we have if it consists of gases and if there is intermixing of gases here then the entropy change will be positive why this happens if there is intermixing of gases because it cannot interact with it cannot interact with the surroundings still the entropy may increase if the gases are interacting with each other the gases are mixing okay so that is the condition if the gases are not mixing then delta s will be zero okay now you see if the system is not isolated is not isolated then we have two possibilities what either the system will gain heat from surroundings or it will lose heat to the surrounding right it will give heat to the surrounding correct two possibility we have so if the system gains heat from surrounding its entropy increases and the surroundings entropy decreases right so like this we see we have a system it gains heat from surrounding so what we can say delta s of system this will be positive because it is gaining heat from surrounding okay and by the value delta s of the system increases with the same value delta s of surrounding will decrease delta s of surrounding will decrease and the total change in entropy if you see delta s total delta s total is equals to delta s of the system plus delta s of the surroundings okay so system entropy will decrease will increase surrounding entropy will decrease so there will be a competition between the two right two processes are opposite right system is taking heat surrounding is losing heat right all these things we have so right down to this the next point during a spontaneous process during a spontaneous process the entropy of the system during a spontaneous process the entropy of the system increasing uh so entropy system uh sorry entropy of the system increases till the system attains equilibrium state till the system attains equilibrium state hence at equilibrium the entropy is maximum so entropy keeps on increasing till the equilibrium state and at the equilibrium state it becomes constant it won't change further right hence write down the next line so at equilibrium 
the entropy of the system is maximum the entropy of the system is maximum hence there is no further uh, sorry maximum and there is no further increase in entropy right so since at equilibrium the entropy becomes constant so delta s at equilibrium is equals to zero change in entropy at equilibrium equals to zero for non spontaneous process for non spontaneous process delta s is less than 0 it decreases in non spontaneous process there are a few things you need to understand for entropy now we are considering a situation here like in which we have an isothermal isothermal reversible process isothermal reversible process okay isothermal hai so we have to constant temperature what we are assuming suppose the system absorbs q amount of heat you can assume anything i am assuming this q amount of heat anything in in the sense i'll tell you what q amount of heat from surroundings surroundings at temperature t okay you can also assume that system releases q amount of heat right at temperature t i am assuming absorbs both way you can assume right so system is absorbing heat so what is the change in entropy of the system it is plus q by t Yes or no? Definition we have in entropy definition is this only plus Q by T. What about surrounding? Could you tell me? Surrounding entropy decreases or increases? Surrounding entropy. decreases by same value right q by t minus q by t because surrounding is losing heat and system is gaining heat so what is the total change in entropy delta s total this would be equals to delta s of the system plus delta s of the surroundings which is nothing but plus q by t plus minus q by t which is zero so delta s total for a reversible isothermal process is zero the change total change in entropy for a reversible isothermal process is equals to zero clear so we have done half of the discussion of entropy we have few more things left in this chapter okay that we'll do in the next class because we don't have time we cannot start any new thing 
if it is if it is reversible then ds total if it is reversible then i have given you just a general thing over here that total entropy change would be equals to system plus surrounding now we are applying condition into this right system is not isolated so system surrounding interacts then this kind of possibility we have total entropy change is this now depending upon the condition what are the things we'll get that we are seeing see in irreversible process there will be change in entropy right and we cannot count them see reversible is kind of idetic uh, ideal no so system will lose heat and surrounding will gain we are not talking about the heat content over there it is also possible the system lose uh, absorbs you know heat and some heat is contained in the system right that is we are not talking about in irreversible process it is it is different okay why it is different because uh it depends upon first of all the system is at what temperature and surrounding is at what temperature right isothermal process we have constant temperature everywhere right then also we have exchange of and uh, randomness because of the motion of the particles in irreversible process generally we have two different temperature and in that what happens we'll have a small derivation for that that will discuss next class mother okay we'll have a small derivation and we'll see the delta s of the process in irreversible a process if it is there then entropy of the system always increases right entropy always increases that's why i have given you one term there that all naturally occurring process are what all natural occurring process are irreversible and spontaneous right so naturally whatever process is happening is irreversible and hence the entropy of the universe is continuously increasing because it is irreversible so for irreversible change in entropy is always positive how it is positive we'll have a small derivation of that we'll discuss that next class okay understood tell me guys fast Sixteenth one. One second. Yes, tell me. No. see we are not considering that because we cannot calculate that two cylinder a and b when the expansion is there we are not assuming that the energy is getting lost in this process that's how we are conserving the energy on actual scenario if you see then yes it is possible in in the form of heat due to friction some amount of energy will lost right but here we are not considering that we are considering ideal condition ideal case where there is no loss of energy yeah work done for expanding whatever work is done by the system but there is no loss of energy in that process loss of energy if you consider then we cannot apply all these expression that we have delta h delta u because everything is based upon the you know the the conservation of energy that's why you see whenever we have piston cylinder system we always have frictionless piston in physics you may get some friction but we have some terms over there by which we can calculate but mostly here we'll get frictionless system right or there is no loss of energy due to heat or friction that is what we consider correct yeah 
So heat loss, you don't consider. Okay, you won't get that question. It's not like we do not calculate, but it's not there in our syllabus now. Okay, fine, guys. See you in the next class. Okay, I'll share the uh, assignment on this also. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Take care.